Matthew Doyle was born and raised in Sydney. He is a descendant of the Murrawari people of northwest New South Wales. He studied at Naysda College from 1985 to 1988 and then became a founding member of AIDT, the company. Matthew is a dancer, musician, songman, yidiki player, cultural consultant and educator with over 35 years of experience in the performing arts across all genres. Please welcome to the stage, Matthew Doyle. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome. How are you all today? Good. Sound half asleep. Sound worse than me. Um, I was born and raised here on Gadigal land. Um, and it's an honour and a pleasure to welcome you all here today onto Gadigal country. I'd also like to acknowledge the closest neighbours, the Bidjigal to the south and the Wongal to the west. This is where these three clans would come to this area called the grounds. They were hunting grounds. This is where we come to hunt kangaroos, which is a, a, a right for young men uh, to be able to call themselves men. They had to know how to hunt and catch kangaroos. So it's a very significant uh, area. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to welcome you all here today on the Gadigal land. As many of you know, it's customary in our culture that we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land. We acknowledge the ancestors and the spirits of this land. And of course, we pay our respects to our elders, past and present. I'd like to extend that respect to all of you here this afternoon. Tajibalang, Onia, Yoli Pirongo Marago, Murang Karikalora, Ungongamania, Talinarangun, Banijiminka, Chokalania. And all of that basically means g'day. <laughs> I wish it didn't, but it doesn't. No, it, uh, it means we acknowledge on my behalf and your behalf that we acknowledge the custodians, the land, the waters, and of course, the descendants of these lands. We welcome you not as visitors or friends, we welcome you as family and embrace you. So I'd like to offer you a warm and sincere welcome here on Tukatigal land. I'd also like to welcome you with a song on the, what most of you know as the didgeridoo. It has many names. We call it Yidaki. And this is a song of welcome, but it's also a song about people coming together as you all are today. So. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to SecureCon 2022. Firstly, thanks for our marketing team. That's the first time and the last time I'll probably ever walk out to a full football stadium. My name's Noel Olnert, and I'm really grateful for you joining us here today. And I want to say thank you to Matthew. Wow, what a start to today's proceedings. Um, this is the first, year, first SecureCon because this is Securo's first birthday. So 12 months ago, we got an, we, four organizations came together because we believed that together we could create something more powerful, more impactful for the Australian IT technology and security space. For those that aren't aware, Securo is a co-creation of four brands, four fast-growing brands in the sector, Solista, Privasec, CXO Security, and Navero. We bound together with a simple mission of becoming the most trusted partner in APAC to deliver digital resilience and digital transformation. Now we sit with 160 Securians across Asia Pacific. We've got people from Singapore to Sydney, the Gold Coast, Brisbane, Perth, Melbourne, and I'm really proud that we're now across Australia and Asia Pacific delivering end-to-end -end solutions for our clients. First of all, I'd like to thank our supporting sponsors. It's great to see some of the sponsors here today which have been with some of the legacy brands from day one. And we really appreciate the time that you've taken to grow with us. And you literally have grown with us from day one. Pure Storage, CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Splunk, and Mindcast, and Tenable. I'd also like to say a big thank you to new, two new sponsors and two new partners that we're working with, Abnormal Security, and homegrown Daltrey in the biometrics identity space. We really appreciate you taking the time today and sponsoring us and coming with us on this journey. I'd also like to thank our media sponsors, Cyber Riskers, Australian Cyber Security Industry, ASG Group, Afternoon Sport, and the CXO Tribe. I'd like to give two special thank yous. The first one is to the gentleman over there, Nick Flood, who's Securo's CMO. It takes an army to put on an event like this. So in partnership with, with Pivot, our production team, I'm delighted to say, wow, look at this. Thank you very much to Nick. Secondly, and a huge heartfelt thank you goes to Shemaine Tan. Shemaine, if you don't know her, she's our Chief Growth, of Growth Officer. Of course, you all do know her uh, because she's somebody who brings this industry together. I'm very grateful to call her a colleague and I want to say thank you to Shemaine for all of your efforts today. The industry is very grateful for what you do, and we will be nowhere near as connected without the hard work that you put in to building these tribes and communities. So thank you very much. You're in good company today in the audience. We've got some of Australia's most innovative organisations, established brands which are looking to shatter the status quo. We've got global brands like Salesforce, where, who are secure customers who, where we're helping them to deliver even more transformation inside the customer, inside the, <clears throat> their user base inside Australia. So you're in good company today. And at any point in time, if you want to have introductions to any of the customers, we are really looking to build a community. It's fundamental to what SecureCon is all about. All right, so SecureCon 2022. What's it all going to be about? Well, first thing, I want to get things really straight. Securicon is not a security conference. Yes, there's a lot of security people in the room. There's going to be security smattered everywhere across the conference. But this is a human conference for the community. We're looking to drive deeper relationships. We're looking to talk about the things that really matter on a day-to-day -day basis for all of us in the room. We want to be talking about rapid growth stories. But we also want to be talking about the real world things of the mental health pressures associated with the industry. We want to be talking from entrepreneurialism to the unsung heroes of the industry. Everybody's got a voice at Securicon, whether you're in security or not, and that's how it'll stay. We've got some really exciting sessions coming up. We're going to go, we're going to take you into the boardrooms of Australia hearing how, hearing how executive directors and non-exec directors choose innovation inside their own organizations and how they guide boards to make decisions around risk and areas in which they can grow their business. We're going to have people who've been on the coalface, who are on the coalface, taking their time to come up here and share the stories around resilience. 
Later on in the day, I've got the, I'm very fortunate to be interviewing the Lee brothers, Shane Lee and Brett Lee. As we know, Brett Lee's one of the most famous cricketers in the world and one of the most famous Aussies. Not many people can become the fastest bowler in the world after breaking their back twice. That's going to be some good stories of resilience, and I'm looking forward to doing that. One thing I'm really looking forward to is the controversial game show. CRO, CISO, CIO, what's the difference in opinions going to be? Everybody's either looking to protect and grow the business. There's going to be some really exciting things come out of that. But it's really, again, it really is about the people today. I'm going to predict a very interesting few hours. The strategy that we've gone for today is really around keeping it condensed, keeping it meaningful, and having real-world conversations. What we believe at Securo is hard work, craftsmanship, skills in our industry, and fun can all work side by side. So I'm going to talk about several things today. I'm going to talk about the resilience that we need. I'm going to talk how perception becomes reality and how we can change our perceptions to get through obstacles. And I'm going to talk in detail around courage and the courage that within our organisations we can deliver to start taking those small steps to becoming better organisations, better leaders and better inside and outside of work. But I'm going to start with the fun aspect. You know, fun. Right? It's about enjoying ourselves, right? It's, uh, it all gets a bit serious sometimes, let's be honest. And I think I was thinking about the, the, the fun times, and maybe this is my naivety, but I was rolling back to kind of 2013, 2015, when uh, I started Solista as a business, and uh, we were all just running around. And I was like, is that the golden age of cyber that we had there? Have the golden years vanished? I remember that it was like we was... We were building clouds on credit cards. We were building clouds on our mates' credit cards. If you really cared about compliance, you might be building clouds on your CFO's credit cards. Who knows, it was the, it was the cloud really started bringing that renaissance for technology, being at the forefront of the way organizations drive their business. And the world has changed. Back then, there wasn't any GDPR. There wasn't any uh, Privacy Act. The breach laws were completely different. Um, and just life was different. There wasn't any masks. There wasn't any mute buttons. I feel it was a simpler time. Um, and it could have been the golden years because maybe it wasn't so serious. But maybe also we need to think about it. Were the stakes as high back then? Have the stakes got higher year on year, month on month in our industry? And with the stakes being higher, has the opportunity to take advantage of the opportunities in front of us become greater as well? And that's really what I kind of talk about today, how we can look at whatever's in front of us and take advantage of these opportunities. And that's what we want from Securicon, just to spark a bit of that information. So it's 2022 now, or it was when I woke up this morning. I'm struggling from a bit of sleep deprivation at the minute, so I don't really know what day it is, but I'm pretty confident it's 2022. The digital demands that we have on our organizations are just prolific. The community that we are in today, we're always focused on more connectivity, more digital touch points. We're at full throttle into the digital age. And the digital age demands a new approach. We, ecosystems of partners and customers and vendors are more intertwined than they ever have been and more reliant on one another's success. So it's a really exciting time. But it doesn't come without the pressures, because the higher the expectations are, the greater the opportunities are to take advantage of this amazing space that we work in, in this technical and digital world. And again, that's what Securicon is going to be focused on. So I'm going to get into a few things now. As I said, I'm going to talk about perspective, courage, and resilience. The slide behind me there shows my, uh, it's, a, it's a proverb from Haiti. Um, if anybody's read the book, Mountains Beyond Mountains, I strongly recommend it, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, what the proverb aligns is, no matter what obstacles come in our way, everything that we can overcome, you're going to get to the top of that hill, we can celebrate, and let's be honest, we should celebrate, that today is really part of a, a celebration, um, that we get to that and we overcome that. But once you start looking over those mountains, there's always going to be more mountains ahead of us. How we perceive those obstacles ultimately is how we define our own reality. And I really have a look around of what's happening in the world today, the threats that we see out there. It's become part of 
who we are as a fabric of society, whether we like it or not. So the perception that we have around those threats in front of us will really define us. If I have a look at the kind of bouncing back from different perspectives, if we have a look in 1997, Apple were just about to go bankrupt. And they brought back Steve Jobs, and it was only at rock bottom, when all perception and ego had gone to one side, did they fundamentally have to change their business, and the rest is absolute history. And in our industry, there's one thing that we know around things that are going to happen, and it's not just in our industry, it's, it's in the world. Things will go wrong. Things always go wrong. So the, so the pieces of information that we see on the front page of newspapers today, it's only going to get worse. So we need to accept that. So we need to build up our strength of understanding our perception of the challenges that we have. And the only way to get over that and be confident is to have that anticipation that things can go wrong and we're going to have the right perception in order to turn these challenges into opportunities. The Stoics, Stoics had a saying for this, and it really res resonates with me. The saying is, the obstacle is the way. Okay, I'm now going to talk about courage. Because I believe as leaders, it is vital that we deliver courage inside our organizations, inside our homes, and inside of our, our communities. So how do we start building courage inside, our, in, in, inside those communities in which we strive in? Courage has got a vital place in the business community today. If we have a look back at 2020, leaders, staff, people throughout the world had to adopt and make aggressive changes, rapid changes, because it was down to survival. It was survival. One minute we were all working in the office, the next minute we were working on Teams, then it was Zoom, and then it was something else, and maybe a bit of Slack. But it was a survival game, and we came out of it, for the most part, well from the other side. So I ask the question is, where can we start every single, where can we start maybe tomorrow, adding more courage into the way we go about our business operations? So the first thing is, preparation makes you brave. You've got to ask yourself, the organization next to you, the person next to you, are they more brave than you or are they more prepared? Because only training and taking time to understand our craft allows us to navigate the challenges that we see each other in front of us. So I say from today, let's really make sure that we're prepared for anything that can happen because then we can take advantages of the, the opportunities that will come inside this industry. The second part is we just need to start somewhere and do something. I really believe that we don't, it, often where we look at this kind of grand vision, um, it's easy for me to see a grand vision in front of lots of chandeliers here, isn't it? But uh, um, uh, that we're trying to do something too big too soon. It's all about the small steps. We only need to have the right energy to take the next step forward and great things can happen. So from small things, great things can happen. And I ask you, what are the small steps we can start doing today or tomorrow which show courage inside our businesses, which show courage in our industry, which can fundamentally keep us moving forward? The third area is courage is contagious. The challenge is fear is contagious as well. It often only takes these small steps, one bout of courage, to completely change the dynamic of an event that's going on. So I ask you, if your systems are broken, if you can see opportunities for change, put your hand up, make the changes, be that person who takes the first step because that is contagious and that's how we create change in the, in the industry. I'll give you an example of some courage that we've seen inside Securo. And I don't think they're here today and I won't embarrass them um, by, by saying their name. But as an organization, Securo, um, a core part of our business is compliance. We go and have conversations day in, day out with organizations to be, so they can become more compliant, so they can become certified. And of course, we have to eat our own, well, eat our own dog food. So there's a graduate who started with us about six months ago, and he put his hand up to become the person that's going to run our audits internally so we can get all our ISO certifications. Now, I don't know about you, but auditing auditors sounds like a pretty tough job when you're one month out of university. You know, it's like you got to give it to him. But he put his hand up and he did it. And when he worked with a team of people who've done it before and he asked the bigger questions and he put his neck on the line. That person has grown significantly in those six months because they showed courage. They've gained the gratitude of the organization 
and we are so grateful for the work that he's done because of course we're so much more compliant than we were before he came along but it just shows those courages can happen in each pillar of the businesses it's not just about the leaders standing on stage to do that we must recognize all of those small areas of courage throughout the industry and really really push really really push that to uh, to promote within that so that's the second thing to talk about is courage the final thing I'm going to talk about is resilience. So where we, we uh, 12 months ago, um, I, was, I started a podcast and it's been, an, it's been a, an eye-opening experience and it's about building resilience. And I've been very, very fortunate to have the likes of Shane Lee kind of push me along to say, hey, keep going, we'll get you some interesting conversations. And the conversations that I've had over the last 12 months have been amazing. I've interviewed entertainers, I've interviewed people at the top of their sporting game. I've interviewed uh, athletes. I've interviewed politicians who've just displaced prime ministers. I've even interviewed the Wiggles. And uh, I'll tell you what, getting up on stage uh, for, uh, for 12 nights in a row at Madison Square Garden, you're going to need some resilience singing those songs. Um, but I always ask people in the last part, the last question I ask everybody in the, in, on the podcast is, how would you define resilience? And there's slight versions of this, but it always ends up boiling down to the same point, that having personal resilience is the ability to keep moving forward no matter what comes your way. And I think it's really profound that we think about that where, as we're going through tough times, but also ensuring that we're setting up resilient foundations to take advantage of the opportunities ahead of us. I'm going to finish with this, okay? So the gentleman on the slide is Admiral James Stockdale. I don't know if any of you have heard of him, about him before, um, but he's a pretty interesting gentleman who went through uh, some really testing times. So you can see up there what's classed as the Stockdale Paradox, and I'll read it out because I think it's important. The Stockdale Paradox is, just gone from a screen there, um, the Stockdale Paradox is you must maintain unwavering faith that you can and will prevail in the end regardless of the difficulties and at the same time you have the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality wherever they might be and I feel that's pretty interesting and relevant for some of the scenarios that we end up to in our uh, in our industry so uh, so uh, James Stockdale uh, spent eight years in the Hanoi Hilton uh, one of the most brutal prisoner of war camps um, that, that there's ever been. And he chose to be resilient and he chose to have the mindset that no matter what was going to happen to him in the next eight years, that he would try and thrive through it. He wouldn't just survive. He wouldn't rely on optimists. He said that the, people, the optimists were the people that broke the first because every morning they'd wake up or every night they'd go through it and they were waiting for somebody else to come and save them. And the point of the Stockdale Paradox is that no matter what is happening with us in our personal business lives, it's on us. It's on us to take advantage of that and learn from all of the experiences that we're going through. And I think that's what I'll finish with. As an industry, as a community, we've got a unique opportunity here to continue moving forward. And what I want to say is our friends, our families, our colleagues and our peers in the industry need to have this mindset, need us to have this mindset that we can keep moving forward no matter what and take advantage of the opportunities. My hope is that Securicon can inspire and create a community and that you leave today just with a little bit more information, maybe something that could spark some of your own interest and help you with your own resilience and create that opportunity to take advantage of the situation that we're in. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's have some fun, let's enjoy it. And on that note, I'll hand over to Prashant. Thank you.